What's the word, y'all? NBA All-Star Weekend is dead. At least that's what the people are saying, and we're here to talk about that. And yeah, we're talking about it basically two days later than everybody else, but I was there in Salt Lake City. I had to get home here in Chicago, so uh, it, it's late, but you clicked on the video, which I appreciate. Speaking of appreciation, I know I do this way too often, but I, I really appreciate the love y'all show across this channel and all my other channels, because I wouldn't be able to go to Salt Lake City and do the cool things I, I do if it wasn't for y'all showing love, so thank you. While we were there, we did a live show in front of an audience, and I underestimated the amount of people that be watching my podcast in Utah so if you showed up thank you we had a blast we had Metal World Peace on the show the day before that we had Anthony Edwards we got 15 to 20 minutes with Anthony Edwards I'll put the, those links in the description uh, really cool dude shout out to Adidas for setting that up we also went to media day I got to basically ask every NBA all-star a question which was really cool favorite moment is somebody asked Larry Market and who's the GOAT and he looked at me and he pointed he said we know what he want me to say but I'm not gonna say it so shout out to Mr. Marketing for showing love shout out to everybody really it was it was a blast and again thank you for that but y'all care about friday saturday and sunday that's when the festivities will happen that's for the nba fan this is where all of the greatest players in our league come together to put on a show for us and and did it live up to the hype no but reality is it never really does we're gonna talk about that let's start off with friday start off with the celebrity game uh, i'm gonna be honest with you this is not something i care about uh, i did this year though and I do want to say they've changed it up quite a bit since the last time I actually watched it. And the reason I watched this year is because our boy Jester was in it, uh, uh, putting on for the NBA YouTube community, I guess. I was going to say 2K community, but it's been a long time since brother has put together some, some 2K content. Either way, one of the OGs, we had to show our love. And for the most part, it was all right. You know, the best part, of course, is DK Metcalf throwing down a bunch of different dunks. But it's a celebrity game. If you either care or you don't. And then Rise of Stars is always pre pretty fun for me. The second year in a row where they, they broke it up into different teams. So some love to some G League players in reality. I, none of them really showed up crazy. I was excited to see what Scoot had. He didn't really give us nothing too crazy. But the, the savior of that event was Jose Alvarado being mic'd up and doing some great stuff. So shout out to Jose. Overall, Friday is like the day people get in. Uh, and, and people don't really care too much. Saturday, when I was growing up, Saturday was the fun day. Yeah, all-star game is on Sunday, but like, I like to see the skills comp. I like to see the three-point shootout, the dunk contest. That was me growing up. But as I continue to get older, the Saturday got worse and worse and worse. And if it wasn't for the savior, Mac McClung, this whole all-star weekend would have been in the tank. And I, I know some people still think it was, but if it wasn't for Mac McClung showing up and showing out, then, oh man, the tone of this video will be completely, completely different. I don't know what the skills challenge. Absolutely hated it. I, I, don't, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know why they continue to do this. I honestly do believe back in the, back in, the, back in my day, um, they had it right. And people cared. Derrick Rose, John Wall, Darren Williams, Rajon Ron, the best point guards in basketball back then was doing the skills competition and the traditional. You weave through, you throw the bounce pass, you throw the chest pass, you hit the shot. Those were, so I have some really fond memories of that. Derrick Rose threw down a reverse dunk during that event back in the day. And they changed it up to make it this team thing. And it was awful. The rookies did the shooting competition and ended up with like three total points. The Ata the Kupo brothers didn't have Giannis. <laughs> So Drew Holiday was an honorary onto the Kumpo. Ultimately, Team Jazz won it, which is cool. Last year, Team Cavs won it. So whatever city is in, it seems like it's working for the home city to win that award or that event. But overall, it's one that you can completely skip. And when I was growing up, it was one of my most fun events. And I, I think we have to have a conversation on how we could get the star players to care about things outside of the actual All-Star game. Because, I mean, the dunk contest could be better. All of these things could be better. But I say that. But they care about the three-point shootout. Steph Curry has been in it. If it wasn't for him being injured, I'm sure he probably would have been in it again. Klay Thompson, Damian Lillard finally got his. And, like, these star players care about the three-point shootout, but they don't care about the dunk contest. It doesn't make any sense. God thought was going to win it all, ended up with eight total points. Ke Kevin Hurdle. Actually, the, the, the Sacramento Kings as a whole, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't an amazing time. Um, for All Star Weekend, but they were there, which is all that really matters. Kevin Hurd put up eight points. I don't think De'Aaron Fox scored in the actual All Star game. So bonus did some things, but it's the All Star game. But either way, uh, the three point shootout did some great things. Round one, Tyrese Halliburton ended up with like thirty plus points, and we got Buddy Hill, Tyrese, and Damian Lillard, and Dane finally closed it out and got his first three point shootout championship. He said he's retiring from that. He just wanted to get one because that was a part of the. What did he say? Part of being an all time great shooter was getting this event and he got that and it was fun they always do like the extra i think in previous years it was mountain dew sprite or whatever and now it was starry the, the extra three-point shot they lost their money on that one I don't, I don't know nobody that left that event like 
Let's go try Starry. No, no. And nobody actually hit all three of the Starry balls or whatever. But like I said, the star players do care about this. We had Larry Marketing. We had Damian Lillard. We had some actual all-star participants in this one. But I, I wonder if it would be better if we gave it to the non-all-star people that are elite level shooters the isaiah joes of the world and i mean it has been like that before where people that aren't considered all-star or near all-star talent were in and i mean we saw some of that today like buddy hill is not considered an all-star close to it but he's one of the best shooters i wonder if it would be slightly more competitive and this year it was competitive right i think damian lillard literally needed to hit the last shot to win it so it wasn't like it was a snooze fest but like i would be a little bit more interested if if we added a guy like isaiah joe because we know he's one of the best shooters in basketball and it also helps the nba's growth to see like the role players do his thing especially if he is an elite person at that thing like julius randall i gotta i gotta have love for julius randall for even a sign enough of this one he ain't had no business being in it and the fact that they keep showing his son anytime he does anything wrong it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way i ain't gonna lie either way that should have been like a isaiah joe type spot and there's other people but isaiah joe's the one on top of mind because he, he, they was campaigning for him. You know, OKC and the fans and the players were campaigning for him to get in it, and he didn't get in. But instead, we got Julius Randle, who we all knew had close to a 0% chance of actually winning. And I think Isaiah Joe had a legitimate chance if he was in it. Either way, it was fine. What was better was the dunk contest. It was, a, it was Mac McClung's all the way. He should have had a complete 50 throughout the board, but I think he... He got one that was like a 49 or whatever because of that and messed it up. But the, but Mac McClellan came in and he showed out. And again, I think he saved All-Star Weekend as a whole for a lot of people, me included, because he was doing some things we haven't seen in some time. I know some people show videos of um, like uh, Victor Oladipo did the 540 dunk before. Uh, Mac McClung gave love to like some pro dunkers as inspiration, which is really, really cool. For the most part, it was cool. I mean, I think what makes a good dunk contest is not just the actual dunks. It's the, the little amount of attempts that get to the dunks. You know what I'm saying? I don't like when we get seven attempts to finally get thrown down. Because even if it is a crazy dunk, it kind of lost kind of his luster. And Mac McClung, if I'm not mistaken, didn't miss a single dunk. Whatever he was going for, he he executed on the first try. And I think that went a long way. I can say the same thing about Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy was doing his thing very first try every single time. And they put on a good show. Uh, Jericho Sims. No, no comment, man. No comment. But then it gets us to Sunday. And uh, the, the best thing about Sunday was the actual draft. It might have been a little bit longer than we wanted. But, you know, Giannis and LeBron have great personalities behind the microphone, which is dope. Uh, we got the Nikola Jokic, I'm not going to get picked last moment, or um, uh, Giannis trying to draft Ja Morant as a reserve, even though he's a starter. So those things are really fun. But once we get to the actual basketball, you could have missed it completely, and it would have been fine. Shout out to Tatum. He broke the record, broke Anthony Davis's record. 55 points is, is really dope, especially on a big day for him because they were debuting his signature shoe. Uh, it, it was a reason he went out there and balled out. He wanted people to care about those shoes. But it wasn't good. And then afterwards, we got people like Jalen Brown saying that's not basketball. Or Mike Malone saying that was the worst basketball I've ever coached. And so on and so forth. And if the players are saying it and the fans are saying it, something is wrong. But the reality of the situation is when, when it comes to having an all-star game, it don't matter what sport it is, it's always going to be lackluster. Because even when Luka, when he was mic'd up for the two and a half minutes that he played, he uh, somebody's driving to the basket. He said on, on the get call, I want to injure him, you know? Like, there's injury risk whenever you suit up, and you don't want anybody to get injured doing all-star break. So because of that, you don't play hard. And because of that, you don't contest shots and all of those things. Across football, football has a terrible all-star event. They play flag football now, I'm pretty sure. Um, baseball does it a little bit, but it's not very extremely. Like, the major sports don't have great all-star games, and it's just the reality of the situation. Last couple years have been really good because the elim ending has worked. And in this case, the elim ending didn't work because um, number two, and number three, those quarters weren't very competitive as far as keeping it close. So when we got to the fourth quarter, Team Giannis had so much of a lead with the Elim ending, Team LeBron really didn't have a chance. But last year in Cleveland, it was close. Steph Curry went off, and then LeBron James hit the last shot. And the year before that in Chicago, it went down to the last couple possessions, and that's when we start to see the good defense and things like that. So if the first couple quarters don't keep it close, then we're going to continuously see the last quarter be a snooze fest just like the first three. But let's be real. Look at the all-star starters when they were announced. Steph Curry did not play. LeBron James got injured. Zion Williamson did not play. Luka and, and Nikola Jokic don't care about the event at all. So all of the West starters either did not play or just aren't built for the all-star game. And now East, Kevin Durant did not play. Giannis played 30 seconds. 
So that's seven out of the ten all-star starters that the fans, the media, and the players voted to be the guys to represent this league either didn't play or don't play that style of basketball. I'm a believer that if Steph Curry and Zion and Kevin Durant are here, the game is dramatically better. Giannis is here, the game is dramatically better. But we didn't have that this season because there's no better show than watching Steph Curry. I'm sorry, it's just no better show in basketball. You saw that last year. Hitting half-court shots and looking away on it. Those are the type of moments we live for. And that's what we got moments. LeBron Jace doing a self-lob or Jason Tatum versus Jalen Brown. Were those the only two moments that are like, that I care about from this? Yo. That, I mean, Damian Lillard hit the half-court shot. Like, it doesn't have many moments where I feel like last year or the year in Chicago, there are so many moments that we, we can talk about. So what's the solution? I, I don't know. I think Shea just was like, hey, let us put some money on it or put money on the line and that'll make people care more. But the reality is for every good all-star game we're gonna have like two duds that's just gonna be the way it is um and, and it, it shouldn't be like that because again we want to see our best athletes put together some shows and and all of those things but it's just the reality of the thing it it i think we've someone got spoiled and not, not not no 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 that's that's a negative connotation i think we've grown accustomed to the last couple years being a lot of fun and this year going back to what it was before the elim ending so it's all-star weekend the all-star game dead until next year where things will probably be better, and then we're going to forget about this year being bad.